Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. Okay, I am currently obsessed with making lunch. I haven't quite figured out breakfast or dinner, but I have become a huge lunch person. And let me tell you what I mean. I am the kind of person who I find one thing and one thing only that I like to eat. And then I eat that for like 30 years. So for example, I'm not even kidding you. You can verify with my mom, with Adam, with literally anyone who knows me. I'd say for like 34 years of my life, I've been eating peanut butter and jelly for lunch. It's not even a question. It's not even a thought. I'm never like, what are we going to have for lunch? I just make peanut butter and jelly, sometimes on a rice cake, sometimes on a piece of whole wheat bread. Sometimes I make it on apples. I don't know, but that's what I eat for lunch and I'm fine with it. I'm not like upset about that. I'm not weirded out by that. It's honestly an afterthought. It's only when people come over and I want to make them lunch and I say, we're having peanut butter and jelly that I start to realize this might come off as a little weird to other people. However, I found myself thinking, okay, I can't bring myself to master dinner. That's just like a whole other beast that I'm not equipped for yet. However, I can switch up lunch. So I was craving an avocado toast, but those in New York City are between $10 and $15, no joke. And you get like one slice of toast for $10 or $15. It's the biggest ripoff. So I said to myself, okay, I'm not going to make avocado toast because I don't have a toaster. Hello, it's New York City. But I could make like an avocado pita pocket salad thing. So I got some whole wheat pita. I filled it with lettuce, tomato, onion, shredded carrots, avocado, oil, vinegar, and pepper. And that's been my lunch for the past two weeks, every single day. That's been my lunch. And I'm loving it. Do I miss peanut butter? No, I have a fresh peanut butter in my fridge. I haven't even touched. I'm all about this pita and avocado life for now. I'm really proud of myself because again, if you know me, you know that I just have an aversion to cooking and I don't even want to ever learn, but I've now finally integrated something new into my diet and I'm really proud of that. I like to call it my two minutes or less lunch. I could whip up the whole thing in under two minutes and that's a good feeling. It's a really, really good feeling. The other thing I'm obsessed with, and this is going to sound weird, I'm going to link it in the show notes. I am obsessed with putting lemon and lime in my water and I got like one of those like lemon squeezer things where you cut the lemon in half, put it in this squeezer thing and you squeeze it into your water and it's amazing. If you are somebody who struggles drinking water or you don't like the taste of water, which is actually a thing, some people don't like the taste of water, you got to try squeezing lemons and limes into your water. It's a game changer. I like look forward to this beverage. So I'm going to link that for you. Um, I don't know. It's probably like $5, but it's probably the thing I use every single day in my kitchen. One reason I'm so giddy about talking about products is that lately this new thing I've been trying is going live on Amazon. So every Friday at 1030, I'll link it here too. I do like a 30 minute Amazon live show where I just talk about things around my house that I genuinely love and use. The past two weeks have been beauty focused. So I last week I did my makeup on camera. This week I'm not sure what I'm going to showcase. So definitely tune in to find out. You could also watch replays. But why I like this is because like sometimes when you're promoting products, especially as like an influencer, You're not necessarily promoting things that you like or you care about, but that you're getting paid to talk about because a brand is paying you. 
But the cool thing with these Amazon live shows is like I'm literally linking and talking about things that I actually have in my house. I'm showing you the products. I'm showing you how I use them. And they're things that I absolutely love. No brand is sponsoring me. No one's telling me to promote these items. Like I'm thinking for this Friday, I'm going to take you to like the corner of our apartment that we use for a gym and just show you all the things I've bought from Amazon that I use at home. And like one day I can show you all of the clothes I've ever bought off Amazon. We spend a lot of money on Amazon, like I'm sure many of you do. So this type of Amazon live show is really authentic and genuine because it's stuff that I actually have and use and it's nothing that I'm just buying and returning and promoting for the sake of promoting. So check out the Amazon live show. I would love it if you tuned in. It's a lot of fun. It's very candid. I'm like truly myself in the 30 minutes. I don't have a script. I have never really practiced. I just do it. And one of the reasons why I'm trying this out is because, and I mentioned this before, I tried out to be a QVC host, I think twice this year and both times I didn't get it. But a lot of people in my life were like, you'd be so perfect at that because you're the kind of person who like, you, when you're passionate about something, you share it with the world and you should get this job and you were meant for this job. And well, I didn't get the job and that's okay. And I think one thing I've always taught myself for probably the past 10 years of just being a blogger and a person on the internet and a person who's just an entrepreneur is when somebody doesn't give you an opportunity and you want that opportunity so bad, you have to create it for yourself. If you want to write a book, but no one wants to publish it, publish it yourself. If you want to start a podcast, but no network wants to have you start a podcast And in my case, if you want to be a TV host promoting the products you genuinely love and nobody will hire you to do that, do your own live shopping show. And that is what I'm doing, my friends. And I'm super excited to share that with you. I'll drop it in the link below. So something that 1%, less than 1% of people in my life know about me is that when I was in high school, when I was, I think, 14, I became a professional kickboxer and I rarely ever talk about this. The other night I was at a dinner and we were sharing a fun fact that nobody in the room knew about us. And I was like, okay, I'm going to share that I'm a kickboxer or I was a kickboxer and people's jaws genuinely dropped. They were like, what? How do you not talk about this? How does nobody know this? But I entered high school after going to um, a private school that I had gone to from kindergarten to eighth grade. So pretty much like most of my schooling was at one school and it was a very small school. I think we had like 30 people in our entire class. And I was sort of regarded as this weird person that people made fun of and didn't invite places. And if they did invite them to birthday parties, it was just to make fun of them. And I used to play softball and I'd get bruises on my legs and people would, this is not a joke, people would chase me around the halls just to try to push in my bruises to hurt me, like physically hurt me. I was not treated very well, and I guess my self-confidence was a little messed up from that experience, but when I went to high school, I finally got to go to a new school. I got to go to like the local public school, and I was super excited about that because I didn't know anybody, and in every single grade, there was like 500 people, so it wasn't like all eyes were on you, and you could be anybody you wanted. Nobody knew who Jen Glance was, and I absolutely loved that, so when I was... um, about to enter high school in my neighborhood there they offered like different workout classes and they offered like a kickboxing class and my mom signed me up for it and I went and I loved it so much that she ended up hiring the trainer to teach me personal lessons twice a week and these lessons started out as self-defense then they became kickboxing where I'd be in the ring with him wearing all the pads and it was something that I loved and it wasn't because I wanted to do this professionally or make this a hobby but it helped me gain strength in a way that I never, ever had. It taught me how to stand up for myself. It taught me confidence. It taught me how to defend myself, both physically if I ever had to, but also how to defend myself in other ways as well. If someone was starting with me, how to you know, talk to them and how to stand up for myself. Like I think karate and kickboxing, they're not just physical sports. They also really teach you mental discipline and communication and just so much more. So even though nobody at school knew this about me, I never told anybody. I never actually had to use the kicks or the punches or the block routines that I learned. Though recently I showed Adam like all these self-defense things I learned and he was amazed. I was like, okay, grab my arm and let me show you how I can get out of it. And he was shocked. But knowing all of this just gave me so much confidence. It made me realize recently that so much of what we're made of is invisible. Nobody knows. Oftentimes we forget 
a lot of what people think we're made of is our personality because that's what spews out of our pores on a daily basis. But it's what we have stored in our backbones that really makes us who we are. Unfortunately, sometimes we only see how strong we are during the toughest of times. Just like we only understand how much pain our heart can handle right before we think we've had enough. And we only realize our enormous capacity for love, sometimes only once we've lost that person, place, or thing. This past Sunday, a friend asked if we can go to a boxing class together. And I don't think she knew this about me, but it was the first time in years I'd ever put on gloves and hit a bag over and over and over again. And I felt so strong physically in a way that I honestly forgot I could feel. Punching the bag felt so natural. It felt like I had just done it yesterday, even though it had been, I don't know, like 20 years, literally. And it just made me remember how much of who we are hibernates for most of our lives. These moments of strength, the moments of pain that we're able to stand up to, the defense that we have, the emotions that we're able to stomach, all of this is so invisible. And when it crawls out of our cage, we doubt it. We doubt that this is how strong we are. We swear it's not a part of us, but it is. So much of what we're made of is just years of learning how to be that way, how to be strong, how to move past pain, and to love as if it's the only thing we're meant to do, even if at times it hurts. My friends, so much of you is hiding, but it will show up when you need it the most. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.